Hello, welcome to Virtual Worship Services with Sherry House Ministries. So happy you're joining us today. If you've joined us before, you know we start with worship. This is when we put our mind on the Lord, take our mind off ourselves, take our minds off of the worldly situations and, you know, things that we may be dealing with in the world. We want to focus on God because we know that He's able and He says to cast all of our cares upon Him because He cares for us and He is worthy to be praised. Would you worship with me today? Doesn't matter how you worship, eyes open, close, come, sway, get up, walk around. God just says to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let's worship God. Father, we bless your holy name today. Father, we just come to you, God, so glad that we are children of God. So glad that you have adopted us into your family to be called your children. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So glad that you care about us. So glad that you love us. So glad that you provide for us. So glad that you protect us. So glad that you heal us. So glad that you help us. Thank you, God. You are such a wonderful Father. Not only are you our father, but you are our friend. Oh, your word says you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You're our friend. You don't backbite. You don't talk about us behind our back. You don't laugh at us. You're not two-faced it. You don't pretend you're our friend and then turn around and talk about us to others. You are a friend that is a friend. Thank you, God, for being our friend. We just praise you and thank you for being our friend, for being our father. Glory be to God, hallelujah. And then your word even says that you are an advocate for us. You're an advocate and in in an intercessor too. Jesus, you intercede on our behalf. Because you live this life as a man. And so you know what it's like to be a human. To be in a human body. And to deal with all the things that go on in this world that is in darkness. And so you know how it is for us to be in this world. You know the things that we do with God. And so you intercede on our behalf. And then you are an advocate for us. Glory to God. Always looking for good in us. Trying to help us. Not trying to hurt us. Not looking for faults. So that you can accuse us or hurt us or blame us. No, God, you help us. Lord, you love us. Lord, you help us. Lord, you heal us. Lord, you guide us. God, you deliver us. God, you set us free. God, you save us. And we worship you today. Lord, we love you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we give God hallelujah. Lord, let me give that so good. I submit to you now. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Lord, touch your precious people. God, save, heal, and deliver. God, open their eyes, those that are in darkness. God, speak to those that will hear the message, God, so that something is said from you to them. Let them know, God, that it's from you. I'm just a vessel. Submit it to you, Lord. Speak to those that will hear, whether it be today, tomorrow, or sometime down the road, so that they can be helped, so that they can be blessed so that they can be strengthened, 
so that they can be healed, so that they can be delivered, so that they can be set free, so their souls will be saved. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want to start with a psalm. And I'm going to read Psalm 77. Psalm 77. It says, I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice. And he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My sore ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remember God and was troubled. I complained. And my spirit was overwhelmed, Selah. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? In his mercy, is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Selah. And I said, this is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy works and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeem thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. The waters saw thee, O God, the waters saw thee. They were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The sky sent out a sound. Thine arrows also went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. Thy way is in the sea, and thy path in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known. Thou ledest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. And so today, <clears throat> today the, <clears throat> excuse me, the title of today's message is A Pleasant Place for us. A Pleasant Place for us. And my scripture will be Genesis 1. 26 to 31 Genesis 1 26 to 31 a pleasant place for us and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth and God said behold I have given you every herb 
bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb to me for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good in the evening and the morning were the sixth day. I'm going to read also 2, 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. And so I stopped at Genesis 2 verse 3. So the title of the message is A Pleasant Place for Us a pleasant place for us so if we take a look at today's world so this is this is what God did in the beginning this is this is what the world where we live now this is what it was like when he made it so he's telling us so much here excuse me he's telling us how we got here he's telling us um, our standing in relation to everything else which he's saying that he put everything else under man that man is supposed to have dominion over everything the things not the people he didn't give us dominion over people he gave us dominion over the things and he made sure that everything was taken care of so he showed that he, he cared about everything. He created a wonderful planet for us, a pleasant place for us to be, to live. He told us who we were. He did all of it. The Bible says he did it in six days and then he, then he rested. He hasn't made anything else since then. Anything else that's other than what is listed here, it may have been made, but it wasn't made by God. God said what he made. And what he did to this earth. Now we see that what he did was one thing. And we can look around today and we see other stuff going on. And it's not matching up with, with what he did. And so it lets you know. Because see God spoke for himself. He was saying what he did. He testified as to what he did, as to what was very good. He testified and told us what he made and what was very good. Now the other things that have shown up in this world today, those things weren't put here by him. God made a pleasant place. He made a pleasant place where there was provision for everybody and everything. Everybody, everything had provision. Everything was taken care of. There was no chaos. There was no cruelty. There was no hatred. There was no bigotry. 
There was no discrimination. There was no meanness. There was no oppression. There was nothing of a wicked nature. God didn't make anything wicked. God didn't make anything mean. God didn't make people hate each other. God didn't make one better than the other. God made one man, one woman. He made them so that they could replenish the earth. He told them to multiply. Multiplication came through the man and the woman. He didn't say do anything else other than man be with woman, woman be with man. He didn't say nothing else. Anything else that showed up wasn't from him. Even people saying, well, let's have multiple spouses. No, he didn't do that. He gave the man one wife. He gave the wife one husband. That's what he did. The other stuff that has shown up in this world is because man abandoned the plan of God and decided to do things differently. Now, God has now given provision for a woman or a man if they are divorced and things of that nature. There is a provision for all that. God doesn't frown on, um, he doesn't, um, he does not say that that divorce is, is a sin. He doesn't say that. Divorce is not a sin. There are certain situations where divorce is valid. And so, and I've even taught on that before, which I'm not going to go into right now. So divorce can be valid. Um, but all of this stuff with all of this other stuff that we're seeing and, you know, even just people being treated horribly and, and misplaced and, and hurt and injured and people trying to, you know, exert power over other people and doing all types of things so they can try to control others' lives and try to make their lives end up a certain way. That's of the devil. None of that is of God. He didn't give man power over another man. Everybody has the right to live and to be, to live a good life and to um, have their place in this world. Because if they were not valid to be here, they wouldn't have entered into the realm of humanity. And once someone is in the womb, they are in the realm of humanity. And so anybody that God has allowed to show up in the womb, they have a right to all of the things that God said here initially. And then, of course, the fall happened. And so that's a whole nother story. But Christ came to flip the script. Because when, when man rejected God, there was a separation. But God, Christ came to restore everything. And so those that have come up under Christ, they are entitled to the provisions, the same provisions that God initially wanted us to have. God created a pleasant place for us. And so Christians, know who you are in God. Know who you are in God. Trust and believe Him for the pleasant things that He wants to happen in our lives. The devil will never desire for us to have pleasantries or to have um, good lives. The devil will never try to help us. He'll always try to harm and find ways of trying to harm. He'll always be deceptive, devious, sneaky, and cruel. But look to God and trust in God because God already told us that he completely and utterly defeated the devil. So the devil is powerless. There are systems in the world that are set up to continue to do his wicked work to oppress people, to harm people, to break people so that they can never fulfill or, or achieve their, um, their the, the reason why they were made. They can never achieve it, you know. 
they can never fulfill, you know, why God sent them here. He sent some here to be the best mother that they could be, to be the best father that they could be. He sent some to be the best surgeon, to be the best uh, lawyer, um, to be the best, you know, cook, uh, to be the best, you know, janitor. Any work that is work is honorable. The world tries to make people feel bad if they don't hold certain positions. But can you imagine what the world would be like if there was nobody to clean up things? A janitor is an honorable job. And people should be paid so that they can live decently in this world. And so Christians, we need to know who we are in God so that we can usher in the goodness that he wants us to have as his children because he created a pleasant place for you and I and for everybody that will accept Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. And if you are somebody that does not have a relationship with Jesus, if you don't know him today, excuse me, as personal Lord and Savior, it is a simple prayer from a sincere heart. You can repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today to answer the call of salvation. I admit that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I admit that I'm lost in need of guidance and direction. I come to you today to repent of my sins, which means to turn away from them and go in a different direction. God, please forgive my every sin and come into my heart. Be my personal Lord and savior. I know that in being my savior, you saved my soul and redeemed me from the penalty of sin. I know that in being my Lord, I must learn of you, follow you, and be one with you in covenant. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you that you are now my Lord and Savior and that I am now born again, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, if you said that you are saved, if you said it from a sincere heart, Luke 15, 10 says that heaven and the angels rejoice when even once and a repent. So what does this mean? What does rejoice mean? It's a rejoicing, a celebration, a party, as we would say, probably, you know, a party. It's, it's a celebration. It's going on in heaven for you, my new brother, my new sister in Christ. The angels are so happy and welcoming you because a new child has been born into the family of God. And I welcome you to my brother, my sister in Christ. If you don't have a church home that you currently attend or a ministry you follow along with, I welcome you and invite you to follow along with us. You can visit my website, www.SherryHealthsMinistries.org. There you will find many resources to help you to grow in your faith walk. And while you're there, if this ministry is being a blessing, please consider sowing a seed to help us advance the Word of God and to grow the ministry. And um, join us for our show, So Says the Lord, which airs on Preach the Word Worldwide Network every Friday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The show is called So Says the Lord. You can get Preach the Word Worldwide Network. Um, but it's an app that you can download on Roku, Fire, Stick. Um, there are different places where you can get it, but it's called Preach the Word Worldwide Network. And you can even watch it on, uh, on the Internet. I hope that you have enjoyed the message today and that the Lord spoke to your heart. I ask that the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, lift up his countenance upon you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Till the next time, be blessed and walk with God.